Located in the heart of Syracuse, New York, on the corner of Castle and State Streets, is a park named after a folk music legend. It's called Leba Cotton Grove Park in memory of Elizabeth Leba Cotton. There, a bronze statue immortalizes the image of her iconic style, playing a right-handed guitar upside down. This is her story, told from a family friend, Mike Seeger. I think she was seven or eight when she first taught herself how to play guitar. She would sneak into her brother's room while he was at school and steal his homemade banjo. When her brother moved away from home and took his banjo with him, Liba knew she needed her own guitar. She used to go door to door looking for work so she could earn enough money to buy her first guitar, and eventually she did. I remember this one time she did an interview and talked about getting her first guitar and how her mother reacted. She didn't get no more rest. See, I was just learning this all the time. I couldn't play it, just making a noise. She stormed to me, she stormed to me and tell me. She called me, babe, babe, put that thing down and go to bed. I said, Mama, I'm learning a new song and I won't learn no song because I didn't know one man. I didn't know no song then. Leba's self-taught guitar style translated into a distinctive sound. Well, she was left-handed and every guitar she ever owned was a right-handed guitar. So what she'd do is she'd just turn it upside down and the bass and the treble strings were reversed. And it ended up giving her music a more softer classical kind of feel. Leba Cotton played the treble strings with her thumb and bass strings with her other fingers a technique many people affectionately call cotton picking. I'm still astonished that Leva was able to write freight train when she was only 12 years old. It's to this day her most famous song and there's been so many people that have tried to cover it. As a young girl, Cotton was inspired to make a song about a train after listening to the sounds coming from the railroad tracks near her home. And it, it would say, choo, 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 chicka, 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 chicka. And I'd go to sleep here and that the rest of the night. So I guess that gave me a, a mind to write something about the freight train. I said, freight train, freight train, run so fast. Freight train, freight train, run so fast. Please don't tell for train I'm on. They won't know what road I'm gone. When I am dead and in my grave, no more good time ere I grave. Place the stones at my head and feet. Tell them all that I'm gone to. Uh, Leva came into our, our family in the strangest way that only fate could have had a hand in. Uh, one day my little sister Peggy was lost in Landsberg department store and Leva found her and returned her to my mother Ruth. Well then my mom and Leva kind of hit it off and became really good friends and before you know it Leva was working for us and that's when my sister Peggy gave her the nickname Leva and it just sort of stuck. The Seegers were a musical family, and one day, Peggy discovered Leba playing a guitar. Then she told her brother Mike to come and listen. Uh, I was astonished. She was a folklorist dream. She was a true musician. Cotton's music ranges from dance tunes to rags, and even includes instrumental and vocal tunes. I began recording her songs in 1952, and by 1957, I'd produced her first album. And I think it was about 1960, when her career just went soaring. She was performing at clubs and festivals all over the country, and eventually she was holding her own concerts. And by 1979, we had recorded a total of four albums, including a live one, and that live one actually won the Grammy for the best ethnic and traditional recording. Leva played in her last folk festival in 1986 in Philadelphia, and performed her final concert in Harlem just months before she died in June of 1987. Let's see, if I could describe Leva in one word, it'd be grace. Even a quarter of a century after her death, Elizabeth Cotton's music is still heard everywhere. From Peter, Paul, and Mary, to The Grateful Dead, movie soundtracks, and TV shows. 
Well, she was certainly a confident person. Before every show, she would say to the audience that nobody taught her anything. She did it all herself, and she gave herself all the credit. Cotton began her public career at the age of 68 and became a key figure in the folk festival revival of the 60s, a National Heritage Fellow and Grammy-winning recording artist. Leva wanted the world to remember her for her music, and she always used to say, tell the world that I'm a good woman, and then that's where they'll find me, right up that ladder in heaven. Pray, train, pray, train, run so fast. Pray, train.